Good morning. So I wanted to talk to you today about an exercise that I've been doing for myself. Uh, it's called Flowers and Stones. And whenever I have a bad memory that causes me some anxiety, now you can learn from these memories, you can learn from these situations, but you don't have to sit in that anxiety still. You're not in that situation anymore. Things are different. So whenever I have an issue or I think about a, a stone, I also try to remember the flowers. And that's really been helping me uh, over the holiday season. I, I wasn't alone, but a lot of my friends are deployed. My, my husband's deployed. All of my family, well, not all, well, yeah, all of my family is pretty far away. I'm not isolated, but I felt isolated. I have a lot of friends. I'm not isolated. I go to my church. I go to work. I hang out with people. Like, I do stuff. I have people who care for me, but everybody was leaving right? They're all going on leave. They're visiting home or they have family coming to visit. And then there's me who's, you know, hoping I work Christmas Eve. So I, I'll have people to be around because I wasn't planning. I didn't plan. So I was having some issues feeling lonely. So when I was talking to my mom, this is a good example of the flowers and stones. So I was having a stone moment. I was thinking about how I spent a lot of holidays alone because of the military and because of moving, and I missed people at Fort Riley, and I was missing my sister and my family, and you know, I was just thinking about horrible things, like my grandfather had a heart attack around Christmas when I was a child. All right, so I was thinking about that. Um, just different things, just different things that were not happy memories, stress-inducing. And my mom asked me, though, what are your what 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 are your happiest memories of Christmas? Oh, well, that changed my thinking. Right? What does Christmas mean to me? What is what is Christmas to me? I started thinking, what is Christmas to me? So I started thinking about memories of being a child and it being it snows. I grew up in Pennsylvania. Going outside and sled riding. We had a big hill. So we would go out and we would sled ride and then we'd come in and have hot cocoa and s'mores. That's a flower. All right, I had been thinking all of all these stones in my past, but we just planted a nice flower in the garden. Another memory, going over to my grandparents' house and playing their organ. I used to fiddle around on their organ and play Edelweiss, the Mickey Mouse March, uh, Jingle Bells, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, and I would play with all the different buttons and the switches and make it sound jazzy, snazzy, and you can put a, a beat behind it. It was a really nice organ. So that that felt good. That was another flower, playing the organ over at my grandparents' house over the holidays, just having a good old time learning something. I actually recently bought a little cheapo keyboard, and so I've actually been playing the keyboard. I'm not very good at it yet. I can do scales, and I, I, I'm learning how to read the music right now. Uh, another flower was uh, chocolate. I love chocolate. I know I say carnivore, 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 but I still dr I, not drink. I still eat a little bit of chocolate on occasion. Over the holidays, I eat a lot of dairy. No, no, we got to cut that dairy out. My insulin sensitivity is so much better without all that dairy. But I still am buying an unsweetened baking chocolate bar, and I'll eat like just one little square every couple of days. Now. I know oxalates are bad, but that right there is, that's a flower in my past, all right? Growing up and getting to eat chocolate. I was a chocoholic. Them her, it was Hershey Kisses. I'd go over to my grandparents' house and my granddad would say, eat as many as you'd like. I took him up on that offer. This is all pre-diabetes. I did not develop type 1 diabetes until I was in my mid-20s. So I was metabolically healthy, okay? I was active and I would eat that chocolate. And so I associate the holidays with music and chocolate. And I can recreate that here. <laughs> so I do. I got my keyboard and I had my little piece of chocolate. And you know what? And I was talking to my mom. I also talked to my dad that day, talked to my sister, and I felt included. So I turned a bunch of stones that day into a beautiful memory garden of flowers. Okay? So, flowers and stones. When you start thinking of the stones in your past, learn from them, but don't forget the flowers. I don't know if this video will help you, but it helped me uh, to do this exercise. I really think that 
cultivating a sense of gratitude and remembering the good times, not just the bad times, can really help lift my mood and help me remember that life isn't that bad and that I have had good times. I've had a lot of good times. I've had some bad times, but I've had a lot of good times. Maybe, maybe next video I might share one of those kooky times that technically were highly stressful, but in reality, I learned a lot and life was pretty darn good. So I'm signing off. I've got a really busy day and I can't wait to talk to you again. Uh, tell me about your own flowers and stone situations. So yeah, flowers and stones. When you have a stone, don't forget the flowers. Cultivate a nice, beautiful garden in your mind. A little bit of each, you know. Them stones, they help keep them weeds out, right? So you learn from it. You learn from something that happened that was a stone, and that weed won't grow back, right? You just throw that right over the weed. The weed, the mistakes that you might redo if you don't have that stone, right? Isn't that great? Good visualization. Have a great day, guys.